Mrs. Smith, mm -hmm. um, I have here a consent for cardiac catheterization. The first step in preparing a patient for an angiogram is to review the procedure with the patient and obtain a signed consent for treatment. Any tests that have been ordered should also be reviewed and the cardiologist notified of any abnormal results. These tests usually include EKG, chest x-ray, complete blood count or CBC, sodium, potassium, and a screen for kidney functions such as BUN and creatinine levels. Assessing kidney function is important because the contrast dye used during the procedure places an additional burden on the kidneys and in fact may cause kidney damage. The patient's admission history and physical assessment should be completed and a history of any current medications and allergies obtained. You need to check your pulses. Oh. Okay. I need your foot exposed, please, right in here. During the physical assessment, an indelible mark is usually made at the sites where pedal pulses are palpated. If you are unable to palpate a pulse, a Doppler stethoscope should be used to locate one. If lower extremity pulses are absent, it is important to document that fact and notify the cath lab nurse of this finding. It is especially important to assess specifically for allergies to iodine or shellfish. An allergy of this type may indicate an allergic reaction to the contrast medium used during the procedure. If this is the case, the cardiologist must be notified promptly before the procedure. Okay, first I need your leg oh, just yes. straight down like that, please. The patient's groin is shaved. The patient should be NPO, that is, should not take anything to eat or drink on the day of the procedure. In cases where the procedure is scheduled for the afternoon, the patient may typically be permitted a light breakfast. The patient's physician will determine which, if any, medications the patient should receive during this NPO period. It is the nurse's responsibility to teach the patient about the need to drink large amounts of fluid after the procedure in order to flush out the contrast dye and maintain the prescribed body position while the groin lines are in place. This position usually includes keeping the affected leg straight. The patient may be elevated, but flexion at the groin must be limited to no more than 30 degrees. It is important to understand that once the patient is positioned per these guidelines, no movement is allowed for up to six hours after the lines are removed. The patient should be encouraged to empty his or her bladder before going to the cath lab. Glasses and or dentures may be worn during the procedure. Make sure an IV site has been established. Here. Oh. I need to get you plugged in here, and then I need to get you a sedative. Okay, I need one. Restful. Usually, the physician orders a sedative, such as Valium, to help relax the patient during the procedure. If this is the case, it is the nurse's responsibility to be sure that all consents for treatment are signed before administering any sedative. Okay. I have a medication here. This is your sedative. Okay. 